Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Balance Bond Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger. And today we are talking to the fabulous Lo Bosworth, who I'm sure many of you know from her days on reality TV. She was on Laguna Beach and the Hills, which I, for one, was an absolutely huge fan of when I was in high school. I think even starting as early as me being in middle school, I was familiar with Lo and Laguna Beach, and I always felt like she had such a down-to-earth personality and was such a nice, balanced um, personality on the show. And well, all these years later, I felt the exact same way about her. It was so fun to talk to her. It's been fun to see what she has done with her notoriety and being such a well-known person. Um, She has done so many cool things since reality TV. She went to college. She moved to New York. She went to culinary school. She's worked in entertainment. We talk about all of this in the episode. And eventually, she started her wellness and female health brand, Love Wellness, which is all about gut health, female health, hormone balance, so many things that are of the utmost importance to myself and so many people listening. I know Lo has been through quite the journey with her health, which is something that I relate to very much. And it was that very journey that inspired her to create Love Wellness and learn all about vitamins, minerals, nutrients, absorption, probiotics, things that we can do to boost our gut and our immune system. So we talk all about that in the episode. I also love that Lo is a fellow Libra Sun, Aquarius Rising. So we do talk about astrology. And that's probably why I feel so connected to her. Our charts are so similar. And she is a manifesting generator in human design, which I believe I looked up after the episode. Um, So I am pretty sure that I said that I would mention it in the intro. So of course, I have to. I have to look up everybody's human design who I come across. Um, And I have been for years. I'm obsessed with human design. Thank you to Jenna Zoe. Check her out on earlier episodes of the podcast to learn all about human design. So Lo is such an inspiration. She is living in New York right now, just around the corner from where I used to live in Greenwich Village. So lots of good memories there. And this was just such a fun, easy, natural conversation full of information about entrepreneurship, healing, growth, um, health and wellness, of course, and I think you're just going to love it as much as I did. So enjoy. And it was also funny because we've been talking about going on each other's podcasts forever. And we finally got it together to record this. And Lo thought that we were recording for her podcast. And I thought we were recording for my podcast. So we're like, um, okay, let's just pick one. So we ended up recording for Soul on Fire, but you can definitely keep an eye out soon for me going on the Love Wellness podcast. And I'm just excited to talk to her more because it was such a natural conversation. I know that post-COVID, it will be so fun to hang out with Lo and be friends in real life. So as usual, this conversation is very much like hanging out and having a chit chat with two girlfriends. So I hope that you enjoy that. And before we dive into the episode, I would love to, um, first of all, remind you that you have one more week or so to sign up for IIN Nutrition School, the Institute of Integrative Nutrition with my discount, which will get you $2,000 off of your tuition. We'll leave the link below in the show notes. You can also just mention my name on the phone if you call IIN to sign up for their health coaching program. This is a health coaching program that I did six years ago that drastically changed my life, my career, the trajectory that I've taken. So definitely take advantage of that $2,000 off by going to integrativenutrition.com slash the balanced blonde to take a free sample class and then get the $2,000 off of your tuition. And it is a super legit program. They actually invented 
the field of health coaching. So you couldn't go to a more legitimate program if you tried. And it's so worth it. It's so amazing. Check it out. Definitely use that link. And before we dive into the episode, I would love to thank our sponsor, Athletic Greens. So I've been taking Athletic Greens religiously for the last three or four months, I would say probably ever since the quarantine started, I got really into my morning routine, which includes athletic greens. It includes sitting in my sauna. It includes my morning coffee because that is the number one thing in life that makes me so happy. And athletic greens has made my life so much easier, you guys, because Number one, it is so much easier than juicing, even though we all know I juice every day. I do not love to juice right when I wake up in the morning because that requires washing produce, taking out the juicer, cleaning the juicer, all of those things so I can get that boost of greens and chlorophyll and nutrients first thing in the morning before I have my coffee and before I sit in the sauna with Athletic Greens. Their daily drink is like nutritional insurance for your body that is easily delivered straight to your door. It is developed from a complex blend of 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients. It's basically just a greens powder that is made to help fill in the nutritional gaps in your diet. So even if you're like me and you eat fully vegan, fully plant-based, tons of nutrient-rich food all day long. It's still really nice to start your day with something that's going to enhance your performance. It's going to give you energy. It's good for recovery of your cells. It is great for your gut health, and it is also great for your immune support. So as always, with all the products that I love, it is completely TBB approved. It's highly absorbable. It is paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, keto, so completely diet-friendly and has less than one gram of sugar. It also really, really tastes good. Um, So of course, we have a very special offer for all of our TBB listeners. So when you try Athletic Greens through my podcast, they're also going to give you up to a year supply of vitamin D3 slash K2 for free. So as we know, we get vitamin D from the sun, and it is often recommended as an important supplement by health experts because it is so good for us, particularly in the colder months, which are coming up. So you can gear up by getting a year supply of vitamin D3 slash K2 which is a combination of essential nutrients that help to support the heart, the immune system, and the respiratory system. So whether you're looking to boost your energy levels, support your immune system, or address your gut health, or simply just get more vitamins and minerals in your day, now is the perfect time to try Athletic Greens for yourself. So simply visit athleticgreens.com slash blonde to claim my special offer today, and you will receive a free... D3 slash K2 wellness bundle with your first purchase. That's up to one year supply of vitamin D as an added value when you try their very special athletic greens, comprehensive daily all-in-one drink. So you would be hard pressed to find a more comprehensive nutritional bundle anywhere else, I promise. So again, that is athleticgreens.com slash blonde. Check them out. You will fall in love, have it first thing in the morning, it tastes super good. And now, without further ado, let's get into this episode with Lo. All right, Lo, we are here. We are doing the Soul on Fire podcast. Soon we'll we'll be doing the Love Wellness Podcast. We just hopped on to chat and we're like, what podcast are we going to record for today? Um, Which I feel like... (laughs) Yeah. I'm so confused during COVID work from home. (laughs) That's literally the epitome of 2020. But here we are. I'm so excited to talk to you about you and your life and your brand. I've been watching you. I've been knowing who you are since I was in high school. Maybe even before that. Via Laguna Beach, which is how I think a lot of people recognize your name at first glance, but you've done so much since then and built an incredible wellness brand. 
So let's kind of just get started from the beginning. Tell us sure, yeah, where you grew up and what your childhood was like. Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me on your show. So fun. And sorry, I thought we were recording. <laughs> Literally, Jordan and I start talking. I'm like, so Jordan, this is what we're going to talk about. She's like, we're recording my podcast, not yours. I was like, cool. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so amazing. Um, that's what happens when your calendar looks like my calendar does. Um, anyway, hi, thanks so much for having me on your show. I'm like such a fan of like your story, your Instagram, everything that you do. I've been following you for a long time. Um, so yes. Hello everybody. I'm Lo. So I'm the founder and CEO of Love Wellness. So we make clean personal care products for women. Um, it's sold on lovewellness.com, Amazon. We're at Ulta and launching into another really big retailer um, at the end of the year, which is really exciting. Still secret, but will be many places soon. Um, and so I have been running this business for four years, going on five, which is wild. And I started it by myself. It was a solo mission for about two years. And and I ran it out of my living room in Lower Manhattan and worked with a team of expert doctors and nutritionists to help me figure out what products I wanted to bring to market. But really, it was like my own thing that I did by myself for quite a while until I could afford to bring on team members and I really saw a bigger opportunity. I think when I started the business, I didn't quite realize what I had. I didn't even really know what the term white space meant if that makes sense. So I have learned quite a bit running this business in terms of CPG, e-commerce, digital strategy, how to build and scale a brand. So I know a lot more now than I used to, right? But I think that just goes to show that anybody can create and build a business if you're willing to like learn, figure it out, ask questions. And if you're really excited to sort of like follow your passions. Mm -hmm. So when I first started the business, I was not well. I was suffering from really severe vitamin deficiency but I didn't know it. And it took me a long time and like many doctor's appointments and different doctors and tests to sort of figure out that, that was one of sort of the root causes of what I was dealing with. And as a result, I had all these like trickle down symptoms or sort of like overflow symptoms. I sort of like to think about it in my head, like kind of, I think about my health at the time, if, like I was a glass of water and sort of my health was the water in the cup. Like my stress kept increasing and the water in the cup kept increasing until it started to spill over. And then it started to touch all these different parts of my body from like feminine health to neurological issues, just like you name it, I had it. I, I was dizzy. I was depressed. I would sit in the bathtub for two hours. I like was always getting infections. I was totally out of whack. And it put me at the drugstore all the time. And I was taking pharmaceuticals all the time, like different varieties of different things for different reasons. And realized that nothing was really working for me. And when I started to do more research, I realized that most of the products available for women had been in market for decades, were invented by men a really long time ago. There's a huge gap in funding when it comes to women's wellness research. So like just recently, we're having a way better understanding of how women's bodies works and how we should be treating them and what we put in them and on them. And a lot of these products were simply outdated, full of chemicals, full of parabens, full of terrible ingredients for the body. Um, and for the most part, that's why these products don't really work, you know, because they're based on this outdated misogynistic idea of like, you have to like your vagina has to like smell like flowers or whatever. And like, that's it. And like no real foundational elements that support female biology. And so I made the decision when I started Love Wellness to actually create products that were formulated with clean ingredients, with women's biology in mind, with and under the guidance of doctors so that we could create products that at the core support gut health because like the gut is the home of the immune system. And through that, support all these other systems of women's bodies. And so we launched with five personal care products, everything from our boric acid suppositories, which are like such an amazing product, to our probiotic that is built specifically to support women's health, vaginal tract health, urinary tract health, and a host of all other products. And so it's turned into this company now where you know we have 17 employees. I think we have like more than 15 products. We're sold many places and it's been a really interesting ride. And then before that, I was on television. <laughs> yeah. No, I love this. I want to talk more about love wellness in a little bit, but first I want to talk about you. And mm -hmm. yeah, you were on television when you were in high school. So yes. what was that experience like? I'm so curious. You guys were a reality show before reality TV became a hit, became a thing. 
So before it was a thing, yeah. Before it was a thing, before there was any such thing as social media or anything. So what was that experience like? Yeah. So I guess Laguna Beach started when I was in high school and first came about, I think when I was a junior, they started casting at the time the show, The O.C. was on. Remember the OC with Misha Barton? It was very popular. Of course. And we loved it. We would have OC watching parties because like we were from there and we just thought it was so cool. Mm -hmm. And MTV turned up one day and asked, you know, a group of students if they wanted to participate in a reality show. At that point, our school board was on board. So they like let them on campus, which in hindsight is so crazy. (laughs) That would never happen now. Um, And they ended up actually like rescinding sort of their permission to like film in school and on campus. But but at that point, they had already cast the show. They had already met everybody. And so they didn't even really need that permission. And so they decided to like film off campus and in our homes and at the beach and at parties and things, which is really stuff they wanted to film anyway. Yeah. Um, So we recorded the first season of Laguna my senior year of high school. And at that point, we had no idea what it would become. Um, it started, it, the show premiered during my first week of college university when I was a freshman. So my very first week on campus, like living somewhere new, I was still 17. And all of a sudden I was like on this TV show. So, uh, and it, it was so weird. And I remember I was so like, so naive. Uh, I watched it with like 20 people that lived in my dorm because I just like, didn't know what it was going to be. And during the show, I had this distinct realization that everybody was like looking at me and was like looking at me different than they were 30 minutes before. And that in an instant I had changed to them. And you have to remember that this was before Instagram, before blogs, before like influencing became democratized to a certain degree. And so I was like instantly the weirdo at school. (laughs) And like, (laughs) I was not popular. Kids were mean to me. They would like yell at me when I walked down the block. They would play the show theme song when I walked into parties. (laughs) Oh my God. I was like bullied constantly. (laughs) I would think, I would think that people would have thought it was so cool. Like you were, maybe they did like in their hearts, but like how it came out, like, you know, how the energy was like um, put towards me was like, it was pretty negative for the most part. Terrible. That must've been so hard. Yes. It was an interesting experience being at college. I was at UC Santa Barbara for two years and then I transferred to UCLA to be closer to home. And when I transferred to UCLA, it definitely got better. I think, you know, the show had been on for longer. So people were more accustomed to it. It wasn't sort of as like fresh and new and weird and wild. And, um, you know, in LA, I also had a group of friends outside of school. Um, I, you know, I was from Orange County, so it's an, af- an hour and a half from, from Los Angeles. And so I had a lot of friends that went to USC, which was downtown in Los Angeles. And I went to UCLA. So I was able to create a social circle based on people that I had known for a really long time. So I wasn't um, totally reliant on making new friends, which, you know, for most people, they, they, they loved college because they could go to college and be themselves and reinvent themselves. And instead, this TV show like dictated who I was. Yeah. You know, editors and some editing bay decided who I would be to the world for a really, really long time, um, which was challenging. And I think, you know, since that period in my life, I have always been kind of trying to move away from the idea of, you know, a reality television person um, and and into something else. And it's been hard to sort of like shake off that narrative to a certain degree. But as I get older and the further away I get from it, and the more that I do in my own career, um, you know, the more, the, more uh, the, the story like changes or transitions. Yeah. It's pretty amazing that that show was on so long ago. And I think 2004. Know- 2004. <laughs> oh my God. So I was 14. That makes sense. And I was so into it. It's so interesting to me that it was it came out in 2004 and it's still yeah. a show that gets talked about and referenced all the time. Um so that must be really interesting for you to look back and think that show really it had a lot of longevity. I mean it's still 
available on like Netflix or something, isn't it? Or yeah, maybe people slide not. into my people slide into my DM sometimes when it's playing on like whatever channel or it's available on whatever thing, and they're like, "You're so mean! I can't believe you acted this way or whatever." I, you were always I'm like, "It's 2020. Have you learned nothing about reality TV?" Seriously. <laughs> so after Laguna Beach was the hills with yes. Go on. Did that, Mm -hmm. was that a different experience because you were a little older and you had more? Yeah. You know, at that point I was older, I was closer to graduating from school and arguably I was an adult, you know, I was like 20, 21 and participating in that show. I really considered it to be my job um, because, you know, we got paid like an actor would get paid to participate in a program. And everybody knows that people, for the most part, get compensated to participate in reality shows now. Um, But The Hills was really popular. So it was sort of like a job in a different like category of the industry. Um, And it really defined my path as a young adult and how I lived my life. you know, a group of us on the show like lived together for a few years, which was fun. And I think really normal for people of that age. Um, but yeah, I mean, in college, my parents were like, you have to get a job. And, and so I did. And, and that's the one that I chose because it was easy. It came with a lot of perks um, and it provided me with, you know, access to a world that I wouldn't have been a, a part of otherwise. Um, and I realized that. Do you know what I mean? Um, and so in many ways, I'm really grateful for the experience. But I would just say that emotionally, it's really, um, it was challenging, you know? And throughout this experience, very early on, even I discovered that, oh, I don't actually like that people really know who I am. But I also realized I'm in the situation now and I better make the best of it because there's no going back. You know, Pandora's box has been opened. So now what do I do? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes so much sense. So it must have been really interesting to get used to having people know who who you are and recognize you on the streets and especially at such a young age. Um, so what what did you do from there? So the Hills lasted for a few years. When did you end up moving to New York? So I moved to New York in 2012, early 2012. And the Hills ended, I think, in 2010. Um, In between then, I worked at a management company in the entertainment industry. So I sort of started to work behind the camera and got a sense of the industry from the business side, which was really interesting to me. Um, But throughout my time on television, I always was sort of chasing after my own ideas. And I've always had this you know, deep-seated entrepreneurial spirit, I would say. Um, and so very early on, I was, you know, writing my blog and collaborating with other kids I knew from UCLA and like monetizing it to a certain degree. Um, I had written a book, which went really well, except for book tour. Book tour was a nightmare. Oh no, why? <laughs> that- I don't know, back in like 2010, it was you like Instagram didn't exist back then. So you couldn't be like, hey, I'm gonna be in the at the Cleveland Barnes and Noble at this time. You you just kind of showed up. And if people showed up, they showed up. And it was like totally a crapshoot. You know, my very first night of book tour, it was in New Jersey at this place, like pretty close to to New York City. And like there were so many people there. And then I went to like a one in Chicago and there was like nobody. <laughs> So it was like such an interesting all over the place experience. Um, And then when I moved to New York, I actually was the co-founder in a different startup that failed pretty swiftly, but was a really good learning experience. Um, When I draw comparisons of people who go to business school and sort of learn about business versus, you know, being an active participant in a startup, Um, you know, both are really valuable, but I would say that I learned quite a bit about actually trying to grow and and build a business from the ground up, um, you know, when I first moved to New York. So I started the business. It was like a party in a box business and trust me, it did not go well. (laughs) So (laughs) like, if you look at what I'm doing right now and you're like, wow, that's so impressive. Just know like very humble beginnings. Yes, there's always a journey leading. There's There's always a journey. So I moved to New York because 
well, frankly, I always wanted to live in New York. And my excuse for moving was, oh, like the culture for female startup founders is really blossoming in New York City right now. So that's where I want to live to run this business. Mm -hmm. And so a friend of and I, a friend and I moved and you know, we worked some and went out some and mostly we're like 25 year olds living in New York City trying to figure it out for ourselves. Um, I'm 33 now and I definitely have figured it out for the most part. Um, But yeah, running that initial business was really interesting um, because we were trying to do a party in a box and we quickly realized how hard it is to curate or design like 35, you know, eco-friendly, but lovely designed items, source them, put them in a box, ship it, get people interested, like really hard to do. Like a lot. It was a lot. And at that time, it was before you could just run to Target and get stuff that was like really cute for your house. Right, right. So it was we were still living in like the party city era when it was just like a Royal blue plate and that was it. And so we thought we just had the best idea and it turned out we did not have the best idea, but I learned about a lot about, um, you know, the fundamentals of building a business and knew that I wanted to do it again at some point in my life. So yeah. So at that point, um, after, I sort of transitioned out of the startup. I went to culinary school here in New York City. I've always been a really passionate home chef and really passionate about food. And, you know, there was sort of like a lot of food undertones to the party in a box business um, because it was about hosting and throwing a party and the menu and all of this stuff. And I had always sort of had dreams of being a chef on TV. Like I grew up watching all of these television chefs with my mom and I for me, you know, coming from a television background, I I felt to a certain degree, like it was achievable, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Which is potentially a pipe dream. Um, but at the time, you know, I had a really great agent and, you know, we were actually like talking to cooking channel and like talking to food network at that time when I was in school and, you know, sort of got far along in the process. And then I finished culinary school and throughout that entire time, I was creating a ton of food content that sort of transitioned into wellness content. Cause now we're kind of butting up to the start of love wellness years when I started to become ill and not myself. And, you know, the deals with the Food Networks ended up falling apart because they decided that they wanted to work with different kinds of talent, which happens all the time. If you work in entertainment, you know that like it's an extremely fickle industry and you can be chosen one day and literally not chosen the next. And so I'd gone to culinary school and like really like prepared myself and trained and, you know, was really passionate about food and cooking and recipe development and nutrition. Um, And my program was a farm to table program. And so like, I loved the idea of like, you know, cooking seasonally and sourcing local food and like what was, you know, appropriate for the region. Um, So I learned so much about, you know, food and, you know, how it really works and complements with the body and who you are. And so like at that point, everything kind of fell apart, right? Like, my personal life, my health, Mm. my potential career path. And I think I was about 29 years old, 28, 29 at that point. So your quarter life crisis is like looming, has happened on the horizon. And it like all happened. You know what I mean? Everything, the the house of cards fell, (laughs) like in every aspect of my life. Yeah. And, and at that, at that age, you're in your Saturn return as well. I don't exactly. Know. Yeah. I know. 28. Oh, I'm familiar. Oh, every <laughs> I learned day. about it. Yeah. <laughs> when my life was in flames, I learned about Saturn return. Saturn return is so real. I'm still in mine. Actually, mine technically just ended. Technically, I feel like I'm still in it. I feel like they're still like fringe, you know? Uh Uh-huh. Definitely. (laughs) Coming out of it is still like, what's going on? Yeah. So I was in my like extreme Saturn return phase and it was really challenging. I I don't think I've ever gone through a period of time that was more difficult emotionally, spiritually, with my physical health. I felt totally lost. Mm -hmm. And I have seen other friends go through this and I, I see like a mirror of myself in them oftentimes. Mm -hmm. And I realized that my experience is not singular. So many people go through this. It's part of literally like transitioning into an adult and who you're going to be as you move forward. But gosh, it was really hard. It was a really difficult few years where I was really treading water and trying to figure out 
Like, what do I want to do? Like, how do I want to pay my rent every day? Right. What what kind of person do I want to be? Right. Those are so many big, important questions to be asking at once. So what were the health issues that you were experiencing? So, I, you know, I briefly touched on it earlier. I was really dealing with a ton of vitamin deficiencies, but they sort of remain uh, hidden under the surface for almost 18 months. So I experienced really bad anxiety, kind of first and foremost. I would wake up every morning and instantly the adrenaline would start running through my body because I was also having problems sleeping. And so just the idea of like going to bed and waking up, like filled me with terror. <laughs> Totally. I really So I would wake up and be like, fuck, I'm awake. I really don't want to be. I don't want to be awake right now. Yeah. Um, so it was definitely driven by a lot of anxiety that, you know, I've always sort of had since I was a kid, but couldn't quite put my finger on or it didn't develop or manifest physically when I was younger. It just sort of took the form of like racing thoughts or sort of anxious thoughts. And as an adult, it started to become worse and started to manifest itself in all of these, you know, physical ways, right? Um, as it as it can. Um, so anxiety was really kind of like the bottom layer, I would say. And then there was like a layer of depression on top of it because I was in a terrible relationship. And when you're anxious, you can absolutely become depressed as a result of that because you feel out of control and you don't know what's going on with your body, especially if it's something that you're dealing with for the very first time. You just don't know what's going on. And so you're afraid. Mm -hmm. And throughout this, there was another layer that I had dealt with for a long time. And it was sort of like vacillated between women's health issues, you know, weight, all of these kinds of things. And it wasn't until I started to see special and doctors, once I really began to advocate for my own health, that started to actually pay attention to the things that I was saying. And, you know, in hindsight, it's very surprising that it took so long for my doctors to figure out what was wrong with me because a simple blood test revealed most of what was going on after an 18 month journey of going in every single direction, trying to figure out, well, why do I have all of these mystery, low-grade symptoms that were were totally all over the place from, you know, depression to yeast infections. Like what? How are those two things connected? Do you know what I mean? But it turns out that they can be. And for me, the problem was totally in my gut. And I had like a severe gut health issue that was, um, you know, caused by and perpetuated by vitamin deficiencies sort of via a genetic disorder that I have, you know, and makes it really difficult for my body to process certain types of food or nutrients and things like that. And so MTFHR gene. Yes. Yes. And another one. And yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, getting different kinds of vitamins through certain types of food makes it really difficult. And so, you know, your level of nutrients in your body drops below a certain degree and you just stop functioning. And with vitamin B, there's a very strong neurological connection and component to that vitamin and how it operates within your body. And so, I mean, I would like lay on the ground and I would be like, I can't believe that I feel this way. And in some ways I I truly felt in my body, like this can't be just mental and emotional. There has to be some physical component to what is going on here because it was it felt so severe and it felt so unlike anything i had ever experienced before and it turns out that i was right you know and like i said a simple blood test sort of illuminated the truth to me at some point and made me realize okay i need to take a really hard look at my lifestyle and how i treat my body and how do i change what i'm doing now so that i can a heal and b remain consistently healthy for the rest of my life yeah Oh, I totally get that. And I totally relate because having had similar health issues that I thought were not related from Mm -hmm. hives to anxiety, to stomach issues, fatigue, so many like acne issues, different things. And thinking, how could my entire body be breaking down and have it not be related? But similar to you, every doctor I saw had no answers. It was like, well... Maybe you have eczema or maybe yeah. you just are allergic to your cat. And it was like, I heard so many things like that for so long. Yeah. 
until I finally found an incredible doctor who could diagnose me with Lyme. I was living in mold. Um, Mm -hmm. I had all the same genetic mutations that you have that make people like us super susceptible to deficiencies and to malabsorption Mm -hmm. um, and everything else. So I too have all those questions like, why is it so hard to diagnose? Why is it so hard to get answers? And it's super frustrating. So I can totally feel you. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is, you know, on some of these things, the jury is is still out, right? Like companies have not been able to commit enough, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to research to, you know, category X, Y, and Z. But I would say that there is a really strong contingent of individuals, doctors, experts that do feel that all of the things and symptoms that like you and I have talked about and experienced um, are really significant. And um, that by living just in general, a, a cleaner, more healthy and specific lifestyle can really help and make a difference. And like, this is what is so interesting and fascinating to me. Like you go to the doctor from when you're a kid and they say like, eat healthy, sleep enough, get enough exercise and drink enough water. And like truly those four foundational elements at the end of the day are the only things that you need to do it's true. to feel okay. <laughs> it's so true. It's so basic. And it's so boring. It's has, so basic. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's easy to make health so complicated because there's so many different superfoods and all the different things you can be doing, but it's basic. It's like I know. sleep, lower your stress, eat well, exercise, definitely stay hydrated and your life could change. Yeah, totally. Just a brief interruption from this episode with Lo to talk about what I'm obsessed with right now, which is hand sanitizer. Who is not obsessed with hand sanitizer right now? You guys, we need it. We are using it more than ever, but I don't trust most hand sanitizers at all. So what I do trust is public goods because they are all about sustainable, healthy, paraben-free products that are good for us, that are not hard on our skin, that are not harsh for anything in our bodies or also in the environment. So I'm obsessed with public goods hand sanitizer. I'm also obsessed with everything on their site. They make shopping sustainable and shopping online super easy. They're a one-stop shop for affordable, sustainable, healthy household products from home and personal care to premium pantry staples that are all in one place. So of course, you can go to publicgoods.com slash blonde or use the code blonde at checkout to receive $15 off of your first order. So I just had to share that with you up front. They also have so many incredible home products that we have all around the house right now. They have recycled paper towels because let's be real, I'm still a paper towels user, but I love the idea of using recycled paper towels, um, something that I can then recycle and know that it's sustainable and biodegradable and something that meets the sustainable and quality ethics that are important to me in order to be TBB approved. They also have eco-friendly toilet paper. They have travel size shampoo. So I've been traveling a lot lately between Sacramento and LA. So I'm all about their travel-friendly shampoo and travel-friendly hand soap. Um, Makes life really easy. It's totally natural ingredient ingredients, but it actually works, which I'm a huge fan of. They have um, different things that you can use in the shower and in your bath, like sea sponges, uh, sustainable washcloths, bamboo toothbrushes. As you can tell, I'm pretty obsessed with everything that they offer. I also love their um, dishwasher pods and I love their laundry detergent pods. And then if you're a supplement person, you can check out so many different supplements that they offer on their site. 
You can check out pantry staples like protein powder, chips and salsa. Basically, like I said, it's a one-stop shop. So you can get anything you need on public goods. And the reason that I trust it above all other shops that are similar is that knowing what's in your products and where they come from is so important. So these little small changes that we can make for more sustainable efforts um, and the way that we shop can make a huge impact on personal health and also on the world at large. So they use a membership model to keep the cost low and they pass on even more savings to all of their customers and you can make your first purchase with no obligation. They also plant one tree for every order placed, which I love, and they've planted over 100,000 trees since September 2019. So check them out with our special offer for the Balance Bond podcast listeners. You'll receive $15 off of your public goods order with no minimum purchase. That's right. They're so confident that you'll absolutely love their products and come back again and again that they're giving you a full $15 to just spend on whatever you want on your first purchase. So you literally have nothing to lose. Just go to publicgoods.com slash blonde or use the code blonde at checkout. That is P-U-B-L-I-C-G-O-O-D-S dot com forward slash blonde to receive $15 off of your first order. And just so you know, they have certain things that are like $5, $4, $7. So you could actually just get this entire order for free if that's what you're into. So check them out. Enjoy. Tag me on your Instagram stories. And now back into this episode with Lo. I would say for me, like the, the food and nutrition element of it was critically important, right? And it is for everybody. And food sensitivities are still something that people are discovering for themselves, figuring out. I feel like there's a huge question mark still when it comes to this type of, um, these type of lifestyle changes, right? But I would say that outside of those basic things, like finding out what works for you from a food and nutritional standpoint is critically important. It's huge. So what have you found? in terms of your diet that works for you? So I try to avoid gluten as much as I can. Um, I did a genetic test that suggested that I could possibly have celiac. And, you know, I've never really had digestive issues, like the classic symptoms of celiac, you know, when you like encounter gluten. But you know, I've always been bloated. I have felt like I've always carried around like a few extra pounds. Sometimes my brain fog is really severe to the degree that I like can't remember words or like the street name that I'm on. Um, and so I did an elimination diet about 18 months ago and I tested a ton of different things. I thankfully am a person that once I commit to something, I can like really do it. <laughs> you know, I can like do it for eight weeks if I have to. There's no cheating. Yeah, yeah. So I did an elimination diet after I did that genetic test. My doctor suggested it. She was like, here, do an elimination diet. Like here's the guide from like Harvard or whatever university. She gave me like the little handout for to like follow all the rules. And truly like all of the blood tests that you can buy on the internet and like all the weird stuff that you can get online, like it's maybe accurate, but really the most accurate and efficient way to find out if you have a problem with some type of food is to do an actual elimination diet, which can feel really, really restrictive because they are. But frankly, it's truly like the only really good way to know if you have a problem. So I did the elimination diet, I eliminated dairy, eggs, and gluten. Those were the three things that I was testing. And I did dairy first as my test or the first thing I brought back in and I was totally fine. I was like, okay. I think I'm cool with dairy. Cool. Yay. This yeah. is great. Cause awesome. I love, cause I love cheese. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I did eggs and I was seemingly fine. I didn't feel any different. And then I did gluten and gluten <laughs> fucked me up. Oh Sorry if I can't God. say that. But, but you're like, totally fine. What did it make you feel? So, with, so on the day when you introduce the things that you've eliminated, you're supposed to eat many servings of them because the idea is you have eliminated something that creates an inflammatory response in the body. But if you eat it every single day for your whole life, your inflammatory response is going to seemingly be lower or less severe because it's your body's kind of become accustomed to being exposed to the inflammatory thing. So if you remove it from your diet for a month or whatever, and then you put it back in and four servings of it, you're trying to create this very severe response. Right. So the next day I had wild vertigo. 
I had terrible arthritis. I had the worst brain fog of my life. And I was so bloated, like an eight pound difference. Oh like, my gosh. It was crazy. So you know, <laughs> gluten is not your friend. It's not my friend, but it's really challenging. I would say that I'm good on eliminating it about 85% of the time. And then 15% of the time, I like, I still want to have that piece of pizza from Joe's in Greenwich right. Village, or like, I still want to have that bite of pasta or whatever, because like, I'm a human being and I know that I don't have like severe celiac. And so my body can handle it to a degree. I'm just going to pay for it for a few days, certainly. Exactly. Um, but at least having information empowers me to make good decisions for myself most of the time, right? Absolutely. Yeah. That's so important to know. And if you if gluten is all you have to eliminate to feel a lot better, that's amazing. Because also there's so many great gluten-free alternatives now. Like well, yeah. There is gluten-free. Fiete <laughs> foods is like my godsend. <laughs> Fiete foods is an everyday staple in our house. Same. But also, I wish I invented Fiete foods. <laughs> honestly, they're so incredible. Um, there's such good gluten-free vegan pizza in New York now too. If you haven't tried Double Zero, it's a really good place. Um, oh no, I haven't. Village. Yeah. I wonder if they're open right now with everything going on. I'm sure they deliver. Um, definitely try it. Gluten-free vegan cheese. That's delicious. Um, mm. Yeah. Cause similar to- Oh yeah. You do the vegan thing too, don't you? Oh yeah. I'm you like, like do everything. I'm all in vegan. <laughs> I'm salt-free, oil-free, sugar-free. But Dang I, Jordan. <laughs> like you, I'm about like 80% with it at this point, just because mm -hmm. you do have to live your life. I was 100% with it for two years. Wow. Um, and I, I needed to be, but at this point I can dabble and I mm -hmm. think mentally dabbling is healthy, but you know, I do notice a difference and like I'm drinking coffee right now. Coffee's probably not the best thing for my body either, just from figuring out my, my own things with elimination, mm -hmm. but I love it. And I think there's something to be said for incorporating the things that we love, um, and then just adjusting with our supplementation and lifestyle and different things, which mm -hmm. obviously is a world that you know a lot about. So, yeah. um, so when you did that, when you had the gluten reaction, do you have a product with Love Wellness that helps with that? So we don't have a product specifically for people who have a gluten intolerance, but... I would say that a lot of the products that we have developed help people who are normal people who are dealing with these kind of low-grade mystery symptoms a lot of the time, right? Whether it's bloating, which was a huge problem for me. And out of that, we created one of our best-selling products called Bye Bye Bloat that's full of like organic dandelion root, organic ginger, organic fenugreek, digestive enzymes. Amazing. So things that like literally help stimulate, stimulate your digestive system, but also pull out excess water from the body. So like, that's a great example um, to a product like mood pills, which is um, ginkgo biloba and organic John's, uh, St. John's um, wort and chastberry root and things like that, which if you know a lot about ingredients helps to support cognitive function and neurological function. So can help with stress and anxiety, things that, you know, I was directly dealing with on a day-to-day -day level, but, you know, maybe you don't want to take pharmaceuticals to address those kinds of things. And you're looking for like a more natural alternative. Um, we have a product called Good Girl Probiotics, which is a really unique product. It is a probiotic that is specifically formulated to support women's health, women's vaginal tract health, and urinary tract health. So a lot of people don't realize that there's different types of probiotics out there. They assume that all probiotics are for gut health and digestion. And they are to a certain degree, right? Because like a lot of people do believe that the gut is the home of the immune system. And when you repopulate it with good bacteria, it has positive benefits in like the areas of the body that it is directly supporting with 
with specific types of bacteria. So Good Go Probiotics is really unique though, because it's made specifically for women who are dealing with infections a lot of the time. Um, and like, I was like that. And my doctor was like, well, I think, you know, you could try a probiotic that has different kinds of strains in it than what you traditionally see on the market to help actually support like vaginal flora. And so we made a product like that and it kicks ass. So a lot of what we have in the offering, like I said, directly supports a lot of those sort of low-grade symptoms of some kind of overall health problem. But what we're not able to do at Love Wellness is diagnose what that underlying ailment is, right? Like that's up to you to figure out, but we can absolutely support you in that journey. And when you are you know, doing that 20% or that 30% of living that's, I'm eating gluten. I went out with my friends. I did this, I did this. We have things um, in our offering that can help to support your lifestyle on a day-to-day basis. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. That's what we all need. I mean, we can eat as healthy as we possibly can, get all the sleep, all the water, all the nutrients, but I think a lot of us still need that supplementation and just some um, some support in that area. So Mm -hmm. I'm such a fan of the products. I have a bunch of them here and I love the Bye Bye Bloat. That is my main. Me too. So (laughs) I need that like every day. I take it a lot. I take like, I think it says on the bottle to take two, but I take four at a time. (laughs) Yeah. We have to know these things about ourselves, right? Like I have always dose higher than any supplement bottle says. And I think it has to do too with our genetic mutation because Mm -hmm. um, we just need a little bit more to actually absorb it. So what have you learned since being a business owner and having a team and really creating a brand? Because that's huge what you've built and that's a whole different arena from TV and entertainment. Yeah. You know, the past few years have been some of the most beautiful of my life, whilst being extremely challenging as well, right? Um, As a first time, well, not first time entrepreneur, but first time successful entrepreneur, right? Where you actually get to sort of like go through these learning experiences and come out the other side and not go out of business. Instead, your business continues to move forward. So like having that experience for the first time is very eye-opening. It gives you a lot of confidence where you may have not had confidence before because you, you built something and it actually works, right? People are genuinely interested in the thing that you have created out of your own brain in your living room. So I would say that you know, the confidence aspect of it is really fulfilling and really important, especially as you try to be, um, you know, a responsible human citizen in the world. If you're confident, I think that you are able to do that better. And so for me, that makes me feel good every day. Mm -hmm. I think the other things that are really important is that you start to see how important personal relationships are even throughout the business world. And when you have a team that you're personally responsible for, you realize that there are actually so many people that you're responsible for. Um, And so working your hardest every day and doing your best is a really important piece of the puzzle. You know, it's like if you commit to something like this, you really are committing not just to yourself, but to every single person that you work with, you know, on a kind of forever ongoing forward basis, unless something drastically changes, right? And you decide like, okay, I don't want to do this job anymore. And then you bring somebody in to replace you or whatever. And I would say that probably the last big thing that I have learned that it is, that's really important is that it is critically essential to get help because I'm somebody that can sort of stay in my little bubble and not reach out. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's why I ran the business for two years by myself. Not because I didn't want to work with other people, but it's because it took a lot to it took a lot of confidence to get me to the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to like talk to people about this. And so I think that you sort of have to break through that feeling of like personal discomfort in terms of how you advocate for yourself or for your business or your ideas to actually get the help that you know that you need to be really successful. Do you know what I mean? Like 
I know how to build a brand, to create product and to story tell really well. But do I know how to literally go into our, you know, advertising dashboard on Facebook and like toggle around with the ads? No. <laughs> right. That is so true. We have a whole team of people that does that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. Yes. So I think you have to realize as a business owner that there's so much that you don't know that you just have to be willing to be okay with and, you know, give power and control and um, empower other people to help you succeed. That's such a good tip. And it's so true. It's hard when you've created a brand to give any control up, especially if you're a perfectionist, which I think so many of us are, but it's true. I mean, you can't do your job really well if you're trying to do everything. Um, especially the things that we literally don't know how to do. So that's a really good tip. Yeah. It's, I've discovered that it's really, it's okay to not know how to do everything. And yeah. nobody who has like a experienced track record in the business world expects any person to know how to do everything. That's why you feel, that's why you feel a particular role. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I think, you know, founders and CEOs of new businesses can fall into that sort of like pit of feeling like I have to do everything and know everything when it's really, it's just not the case. You have to be w- willing and able and excited to get help. Yeah, that's so true. So speaking of um, New York and the fact that you're in New York right now, do you see mm-hmm. yourself staying there? Or do you see yourself coming back to the West Coast? I love New York. I've been here for more than eight years now. Um, My family still lives in California. And so, you know, pre-COVID, I was home quite a bit um, and would travel back and forth many times a year over the past few years. I I think we're all sort of at a standstill right now. And I just, my life is full of question marks and I don't know how to answer any question like that. You know, a few years ago, I'd be like, I'd love to be by coastal, but like now it's like, I I don't really know what the reality of that is. I don't even know where I'm going to be two months from now. So I don't have an answer for you. (laughs) I get it. Um, What part of New York do you live in? I live um, right by Washington Square Park. So I live in a neighborhood called Greenwich Village. I love Greenwich Village. So I moved to New York in 2013 Mm -hmm. and I lived in the West Village, but super close to Greenwich, like um, 13th and 6th. So that area makes me so happy. Yeah. Right in that neighborhood. It's really nice. It's the best. Yeah. We would have been neighbors Mm -hmm. if I was still there. (laughs) Love it. So I'm going to ask you some of the rapid fire questions that I ask everyone who comes on the podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be too rapid. Um, so first, do you know your sun rising and moon signs? Is my rising sign just like my like normal sign? Your normal sign is your sun sign. Oh, my sun sign. Wait, I do. Hold on. I think I have them. <laughs> you think come, it? Let's come back to that question in a second because I do have it in my... Oh, okay. wait, I found it. <laughs> wait, I love that you have it saved. Yeah. Okay. So my rising sign is Aquarius. Ooh. My sun sign is Libra. And what are the other ones that you want? Um, your moon. My moon is in Leo. Oh my God. Okay. So I have to tell you, I'm a Libra sun as well. Oh, okay. An Aquarius rising as well. So that's wild because that makes us super similar. And I feel that vibe with you. Um, Yeah. Like immediately I felt that with you. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. Wish we lived in the same place because I just want to hang out. Come over. I want to. (laughs) Um, And then you're a Leo moon. That's amazing. So you have some fire in your chart, which I don't have. Um, Mm -hmm. So fire is great for what you're doing with your business and propelling you forward. So. What's your birthday? September 29th. Oh, cool. Okay. I'm October 11th. Um, Uh, It's so weird. I have so many really close friends within like just about 10 days of my birthday, give or take, but mostly like on the Libra side, not on the Virgo side. Like everyone's on the Libra side. (laughs) Same. I have have like 25 people in my life that are between my birthday and October 15th. That's incredible. That's kind of how I am with so many people. People whose birthdays are right now, cancer birthdays, every single person in my family pretty much 
Mm -hmm. It's from like July 1st to July like 15th, 16th. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, But my husband is July 24th. Um, That's my dad. Oh my God. Okay. I, oh, so your dad's a Leo, just like my dad and my husband. I swear every man that I know is a Leo. It's so weird. Um, (laughs) Isn't that weird how your life follows patterns with people like that? I meet people and they're always like, my birthday's October 2nd. I'm like, oh my God, another one of you? (laughs) I know you're like, of course it is. Well, Libras are awesome. I love that you're a Libra. Do you happen to know your human design? No, I don't know what even that means. Okay. So after we finish, if you at some... Are those numbers? It's not numbers. So there's five different energy types. Mm, No, I don't Uh, know about this. Yeah. Manifestors, manifesting generators, reflectors, projectors, Mm -hmm. generators. Mm -hmm. So if you send me your birth info, which I'm sure Mm -hmm. you have, because you have, you were able to pull up your birth chart, um, we can look you up and I can let you know what you are. Oh my God, fun. Yeah. So oh, just, I have your email right here. Yeah. Email me. Um, <laughs> my <I'm>, info. <laughs> yay. Um, human design is super fun. You'll probably get really into it. It's something cool. we talk a lot about on this podcast. I um, love that. I know. Okay. So we'll go down the list here. Are you a night person or a morning person? Morning person. Love I fall asleep at like 9 p.m. every night. I'm done. <laughs> that's my dream. I wish that that's how I was. Oh, I'm yeah. a, such a night out. I'm a highly functional morning person. That's incredible. I've always wanted to be that. Coffee or tea? Mm, used to be tea, but now more coffee. But I try to just drink decaf. Mm-hmm. Same. <laughs> Except for today. <laughs> today, not so much. <laughs> Favorite workout? The Class by Taryn Toomey. Such a good workout. I love it. Such a good one. I'm going to do it after this. Oh, good. I need to do that soon. Um, dream vacation. Hmm. Dream vacay. Let's keep it domestic because Smart. that's where we're at right <laughs> now. I would love to go to Lake Powell in Utah. Oh, that sounds beautiful. I've never been. That's yeah, really cool. Utah. It's beautiful there. Cool. Um, what's the hardest thing you've ever been through? Hmm. I would say, you know, the, the depression that I experienced a few years ago, and then I got out of like a very serious committed relationship at the same time. So I would say trying to balance my health and the loss of that relationship was probably the most challenging thing that I've dealt with. Yeah, that's hard. Um, if you were a color, what color best represents your energy? Orange. Love it. Bright, <laughs> bright and beautiful. Um, if you had the chance to meet anyone in the world, who would you want to meet? Um, I would like to be, meet, meet both of my grandmothers on my mom and dad's side, side because they both passed away before I was born. Such a good So those two, those two gals. Yeah. Oh, that would be incredible. Oh my God. It, like I think about it sometimes and it overwhelms me. I'm like, wow, where do I come from? <laughs> I know. I, I have a similar answer to that question, which would be my mom's dad who passed away before I was born. I got to meet the rest of my grandparents, but yeah, I just, everyone tells me I look like him and I talk mm-hmm. like him and I, I would love to meet him. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, what is your spiritual practice like? My spiritual practice, um, it changes. <laughs> so my spiritual practice, I'm not a religious person, but I do believe you know, in energy and I believe in the power of meditation. And I believe really more than anything in the power of your ability to sort of be in control of your own life through your self-care practice. And I think that's why I own and operate a women's wellness business, right? Because I'm really passionate about this stuff. So I find comfort and stability in sleep, in food, in meditation, and in movement more than anything else. Yeah. I love that. Same here. So what's your favorite self-care practice? I like to take a bath or sit in the steam shower. 
either one of those daily, sometimes twice a day because I'm a psycho. <laughs> oh my God, me too. I definitely am a twice a day bath person. Me too. I love the bath. Sometimes at 7 a.m. I'll be texting a friend. They're like, what are you doing up so early? I'm like, I'm just in the bath. They're like, it's 7 a.m. That's I'm like, I know. It's my morning bath. <laughs> morning bath. There's nothing like a morning bath. It's the best. I but agree. Incredible. It's a Libra thing. It must be an so. Aquarius rising thing. I think so. <laughs> so since this is the Soul on Fire podcast, what would be your tips for people looking to set their soul on fire? I would say that you have to quiet the noise around you. I've gotten really good at that. Actually, I think I've always been good at it. Um, but there's a lot of chatter constantly around you. And it's really easy to tune into other people's opinions and voices and chatter. And it's really easy to question your own perspective on things when that happens. And I would say that most people in their gut know what's right for them. And it's when you get distracted that you tend to fall off course. So I would say like quiet the noise around you is a really good way to set your own soul on fire. That's such a good tip. I love it. Well, I'm so happy we did this. Tell everybody where they can find you. Oh, thanks. Um, so you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram kind of sucks. I don't do it that often at Low Bosworth, but um, Love Wellness is at Love Wellness and we post all the time everything from articles from our expert doctors to polls about your health, um, all kinds of really cool stuff. Awesome. Well, we'll have to have you back on whenever we can be in the same place and record in person and do a part two. But this was so fun. I'm so happy we did this, even if me too. it was a surprise for you because you, <laughs> you thought you'd be asking me the questions today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do that one next. It's okay. I'm happy when someone asks me the questions. I do a little less prep then. <laughs> I know. It's, nice. it's, it's so nice. Well, it's so was, nice. So fun. Thank you, my love. Thanks, Jordan. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this episode with Lo. If you missed it in the intro, I did look up her human design. She's a manifesting generator, which totally makes sense to me because she is such a power powerhouse with everything that she's done from love wellness to reality TV to working in entertainment to living in New York for all these years. She's just so cool. I loved talking to her. It felt like talking to an old friend, which is always the best kind of podcast episode, if you ask me. So check her out. Check out her brand at Love Wellness. Stay tuned for me going on her podcast soon because that's definitely going to happen. And also huge thank you to our sponsors for today's episode, Athletic Greens, which we love, 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 love. You can use that code BLONDE to get their special offer and then Public Goods, but you can also use the code BLONDE to get a special offer on their sustainable home products. So Athletic Greens and Public Goods are literally two companies that I use every single day in my life. Um, drink athletic greens every day and I use my products from public goods every day. So check out those special offers, show them that TBB love. And also if you're interested in becoming a health coach, definitely check out IIN with my discount for you guys, which will get you $2,000 off your tuition to become a health coach. We have that link below in the show notes as well. And Thank you for being here. You guys are awesome. I hope everyone's having a soul on fire day. I know it's been a weird year and I just feel so grateful that you guys are here um, and that we have this community to connect on the internet. And that's pretty much the only place we can connect right now. I usually say off of the internet as well, but it's been interesting and just know however you're doing, you're doing a great job. I'm proud of you. I love you. And thank you for being here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have an amazing day. Mwah.